Hey guys, on today's show, we've recently had some pretty crazy solar weather. Solar storms, solar flares, all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about it today, right here, right now, on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL and you have reached Ham Radio for non-techies. Like I said, today I wanted to talk about the recent solar activity. This happened around for people watching this much later on in, in, uh, in time here. Uh, the May 10th, May 11th of 2024, we had some pretty big solar storms that came out. And, you know, there's a lot more to it than people really look or what a lot of people think about now we as hams we rely on the solar weather to tell us what the or to give us the band conditions that we currently have and being in solar cycle 25 and kind of the you know lower middle por portion of it some real some bands you haven't been able to get onto have been opening up lately but while everybody is out there looking at all the pretty lights and all the stuff in the sky I'm sitting here kind of a little bit in horror looking up at the sky because you know you could see the, the northern lights as far as Texas and maybe a little bit further down. And that's not a good thing. It might look pretty to you, know, to you, but there's a whole lot more to it than that. Uh, for something like that to happen, there has to be a lot of solar activity and a lot of magnetic storm activity hitting the Earth. Now, for those of you who don't know, back in 1859, there was an event called the Carrington Event. And that was a massive solar storm that hit the Earth like a like a freight train. And luckily, we weren't completely in an electronic era back then, but it did whack out and freak out a whole bunch of uh, telegraph and Morse code, you know, type uh, setups. And it caused a lot of devastation. If that had happened now, if that same event had happened now with the current technology level that we're sitting at here in the United States or around the world for that matter... It would be a life-altering event. It would change a lot of stuff. It would wipe us out for at least a year or longer, depending on what happened or what got affected. Now, if you know anything about any kind of survival stuff, a lot of people rely on, just for life alone, uh, and that's, that's pretty much all of us, on electricity and electrical components working properly. If they do not do this, then we have problems. Now, they're saying if an EMP went off and took us out, you know, and took us back to the 1800s right now, 95% uh, of the population would be deceased within the first year. Let that sink in a little bit. And let it sink in some more. We have the means to fix a lot of this and protect ourselves I'm just speaking for the United States alone, but I'm sure it's around the world as well. To do this, to fix things, to at least put some precautions in that would at least protect us and protect a lot of us from these kind of things. And the problem is the morons running the country, I'm using the word running the country very, very loosely. Um, yeah, they have no interest in doing it. Just don't care. It can be resolved. You're looking at about, from what I've read and what I've heard so far, it'd be about $10 billion to do that. Now, if you pay attention to anything in the media, we've sent lots more than that to other places to help out other people. Why are we not, as an act of common sense, helping ourselves? Well, because we have idiots running the country. That's the only thing I can think of. What you need to understand, though, the event we had now or recently, was it didn't affect us that badly. It, had, it probably affected the bands, things like that. And, it, you know, we saw the, the northern lights. This flare is currently rotating around the sun again. As the sun rotates, this thing's facing away from us. But when it comes back around, it could still hit us again, or it could dissipate. There's a whole bunch of different things, or it could come back worse. It's something you have to kind of think about and consider. The... Uh, if you go by the decades, decade to decade, the chances of us getting hit by getting hit by a Carrington level event is one in eight. Those are not good odds. One in eight chance we could have a Carrington level event that could put us all back in the freaking Stone Age. And yet the people that are in power that are supposed to be protecting the country, looking after our best interests, aren't doing it. 
They're spending money on all kinds of other dumb crap, but not protecting the country. So think about that when you go to the ballot box. Not going to get political here. So how do you protect yourself? Well, I've had on the channel before, I talked about the Mission Darkness uh, bags, the EMP bags, and those are great and all to a, to a point. Uh, I've had a couple bits of feedback from some of you who have had those before and just had different results from it, didn't have good results from it. Um, but honestly, if a Carrington-level event hit the Earth, it's like a it, it, you know how, how when we talk about grounding, I get, I get in this argument with people about grounding. You need to have your station properly grounded, blah, blah, blah. My argument is, well, if a direct lightning strike hits my house, nothing's going to protect that. The same thing's going to be with, this, with something like this, a massive, massive solar flare, a really big, destructive solar flare hitting the Earth. There's not a whole lot that's going to protect you from that. You can take precautions on things. You might be able to double or triple package things up and stuff like that. But, you know, most people aren't going to do those. Let's go back to reality here. Most people aren't going to do it. Um, so you have to protect yourself the best you can with what you have and what you anticipate. doesn't mean live your life in fear, thinking about, oh, my God, the solar flare is going to take us all out. We're going to be Fred Flintstone, you know, tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Um, but use some common sense when you're preparing for things like that. You know, do you have the means to power up your house or keep power for yourself for at least a year? Do you have some way of doing that? If you don't, time to reevaluate things. At the minimum, I'd say three months. Um, you know, depending on where you live, conditions can be harsh either in the cold spectrum of, of, the, uh, of life or the warm spectrum of life. You know, down here... You don't want to be caught in Texas during a summer with no AC, and it's 110 outside for what we had, I think, 78, 78 days last year. It was over 100 degrees, no rain. Luckily, we didn't lose power, but there were brownouts and all kinds of other things because, again, the government is putting their money into stupid things like wind power and solar power, which is absolutely completely useless, non-sustainable, and uses more resources and, and fossil fuels than what we could be using, except they suppress said technology. So... I'm just calling it out here. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not pulling any punches here. I'm just going to be straight with you guys. There's a lot of stuff going on that you may or may not be aware of that could solve a lot of our problems. But the problem is the people in power are causing the issues. They're suppressing things. Uh, you know, people have solar panels in their house. Did you know that there is actually a document uh, about solar panels are not allowed to be more than 20% efficient, or they get slapped with a with a some kind of a censorship order by the government yeah that's been since the 70s so not gonna get into that whole topic do your best to protect your gear and your equipment i said you know like i said don't freak out about this if you go to my website let's pop over real quick if you go to my website i have a section called current ham radio conditions which gives these charts that show you uh, the different band conditions and what's going on with the, with the solar weather and how you can kind of read it. I've given little keys for these charts because you don't need to pay attention to all of it. A lot of it's out of my understanding, but the things that matter as far as a, being a ham radio operator, you can easily look up here. And I'll tell you what things to pay attention to, which could be the SFI, which is the sun's uh, radiation output, or the solar flux. Or is it solar flux index? Yeah, solar flux index. The A index, and you have the K index. And the K index is up, updated every three hours. So looking at these charts, if you want to go on and maybe you want to go out and do some POTA or you want to just hook up your uh, your radio to see what bands are open or available for you, this is a guide. It's not gospel. I had a, a, a viewer email me saying, you know, these band conditioned uh, charts you guys have on here, they're not really all that great because it says one thing. I go on and try the bands and, you know, they're not really all that all that fantastic. It's not It's not law here. These are guides. You need to determine or experiment with your gear at your location and see what's available to you. Sometimes the bands will open up a little bit, and sometimes they, they're kind of wavy. They go in and out, in and out. I've had that a lot of times on 17 meters, 15 meters, uh, even 10 meters. We'll go in and out, depending on what's going on in the sky. Um, I kind of look at this kind of like when you uh, when you listen to the weather reports in the morning, and uh, when you listen to the weather morning, like, it's going to be a sunny day. You should be going outside and doing your thing. And 20 minutes later, it's pouring rain, and you're already outside with your barbecue pit open. <laughs> it's pouring rain on you. 
So you really can't rely on things all the time. Don't put 100% of your faith into these tools. They're just tools, and I'd look at them more as, you know, suggestions uh, rather than, uh, you know, pure 100% reliable information. So uh, let's see. I don't really have anything else to talk about. Um, guys, I appreciate you hanging out, and I hope you found this interesting. I want to see some conversation down below. If you've got any questions for me, I'll do my best to answer. Uh, go over and hit up on hit me up on the uh, the uh, Ham Radio for Non Techies Facebook group. There's actually two of them. One hasn't had any posts for like three years. That's the dead one. There's actually another one, and you can join that one for free. I got over two thousand members on it right now and growing every day. And let's go over here and chat about this. What are your ideas? What where are some precautions or things you can think of? So maybe some gear that people can use, and let's help each other out and figure out how to pr best protect ourselves in case of either EMP attack or some massive solar flare or Carrington level event. I think that'd be a fantastic discussion to get onto and it'd be a lot more fun than arguing about grounding stations all day long. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm show that you like the videos like this and you want more of this kind of stuff. And it will alert you when I do new videos. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing, click on the little bell, choose all notifications that when I put a new video out, uh, you'll get notified of that so you can come in and join the conversation. I do answer all of my emails and I do answer all of the comments in the comment section. It might take me a little bit of time. I've got a whole bunch of other fire or irons in the fire right now. Um, not going to get into it real, real big, but if you uh, saw me on Tank Radio's uh, Sunday night uh, show, I made an announcement that I've uh, written a book and it has nothing to do with ham radio. Um, but I've written a book. It should be out and published sometime in uh, September. It's a 12-chapter book on personal development and self self-helps, uh, personal development kind of stuff. And I think it'll help out a lot of people. So stay tuned for that if you want to check it out or hit me up and I'll give you more information about that. It's just not ham radio related, so I want to really push it too much. Uh, other than that, guys, I appreciate you hanging out. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Go play radio, ham harder, and all the other cool little things we say in ham radio. This is KI5MPL, Ham Radio for Non-Techies, and we are clear.